After four years of high-octane action involving sex, drugs and bloody brutality, Peaky Blinders ended with its most shocking scene yet. The gang's ruthless, tormented, leader Tommy Shelby seems to have joined the Labour Party. Scroll down for video and people say Jeremy Corbyn had some dubious criminal connections. Presumably after a career as Small Heath's hardest bookie, protection racketeer, and IRA arms dealer etc., he figured his reputation couldn't get any worse. Tommy that is, not Jeremy. On the plus side at least the ruthless feuds, devious blotting, unexpected alliances and betrayals Shelby had been through during the last six weeks meant he would be well prepared for life in politics. Season 4 was Peaky Blinders best yet, mostly because it was their worst. When the Mafia turned up in Birmingham from New York intent on resolving their vendetta the Peaky Blinders discovered they were not as tough as they thought they were. With their fedors and double-breasted Italian suits, the arrival of Luca Cingretta, Adrian Brody, and his hoodlums also meant the Peaky Blinders weren't even the best-dressed gang in their own series. Pretty humiliating. Compared to the Mafiosa's machine guns the Brummies trademark razor blade caps suddenly just looked quaint. The bigger the show's reputation has become, particularly in the States, has also given it more depth particularly with its guest stars. Along with the hypnotic Cillian Murphy, as Tommy, Tom Hardy and Adrian Brody gave an acting masterclass and lesson in star quality. Last week Solomons had started his big meeting with Brody's mafiosa stood with his eyes shut, to better understand the darkness. Eventually he'd done a deal, selling out Tommy, enabling Chinretta's men to try and take out the Shelbys at the first of the finale's three showpiece scenes, the boxing match between Solomon's aptly named protege giant Goliath and Shelby's gypsy prize fighter Bonnie Gold. Big vs Small, Big Will FK Small, Alfie told Tommy. His prediction of the result of both the bout in the shell buys vendetta with Chinretta. The setup seemed to have been foiled though when Arthur Shelby began to suspect the assassins that Solomon had smuggled in, posing as Goliath's cornermen. They don't know fighters. They don't stand right. They don't move right. Arthur deduced. Even though he spent the night, and most of the series, hoovering cocaine. The action cut between the brutality of the boxing ring and the even bloodier fights unfolding behind the scenes. These resulted in Arthur being garroted, Tommy shooting the hitman responsible dead, and then spurring on young Finn Shelby to exact revenge against the accomplice, urging, take his eyes. Do it for Arthur. Not everything was as it seemed though as we discovered at the second showdown, between Brody and Murphy. It appeared Tommy had conceded defeat and Luca come to claim the spoils of his victory, forcing the Peaky Blinders boss to sign everything over to the Chinredis. I was gonna bury you all, Brody whispered to Murphy in his best Brando mumble. But my mother said it will be worse for you if I let you live and take away everything that you have. You can sign the papers on your knees. Of course Knight wasn't going to let the show's heroes slide back to nothing. Tommy had done a deal with two rival gangs in New York eager to move in on Chinretta's liquor empire, plus a third American ally, 
setup seems to have been foiled though when Arthur Shelby began to suspect the assassins that Solomon had smuggled in, posing as Goliath's cornerman. Chicago's Al Capone The ensuing fight saw Tommy give Luke a good old-fashioned headbutt before Arthur walked in, back from the grave, and shot the Mafia gangster in the head. Tommy Shelby had tricked everyone as much as Knight had fooled the viewers. After this Tommy moved quickly on to Margate of all places, to make Solomons pay for his betrayal. You going to look after this dog then? Alfie greeted him, on the beach, knowing what was what coming. No? Well his name is Cyril and he will be very upset and distressed so you'll need to find him someone. He rambled on with typical hardy eccentricity while Tommy shouted for him stop talking and look at me. Before eventually shooting each other at the same time, a classic resolution from gangster films down the ages. While Tommy was, naturally, only wounded, the implication was that his ex-friend was dead, although Shelby noticeably didn't check. If Tom Hardy isn't returning, Stephen Knight writing Alfie Solomons, the early years for him would be even better. With no one trying to kill us, as Arthur Shelby put it, Tommy was sent on holiday, theoretically to play golf and go fishing. Instead he had a breakdown, plagued by flashbacks of the war and drinking himself senseless. This was presumably Knight's form of mitigation? Persuading us Tommy wasn't really a bad man, or if he was, it wasn't his fault. Like a lot of writers who've created violent gangsters he wants his cake and eat it, and never ultimately nails his colors to the mast, either condoning or condemning them. Maybe it's in us cause we're Shelby's, and Polly suggested. It's our gypsy blood. We live somewhere between life and death waiting to move on. In the end we accept it. We shake hands with devils and we walk past them. Eventually this is what Tommy did. I walked past the devil. I've learned something. There's no rest for me in this world. He seduced the young trade union leader Jesse Eden who had brought the Shelby's factories to a halt and persuaded her he wanted to support the fight for workers' rights, enough to introduce him to the secret subversive figures organizing the 1926 general strike. It must have been his blue eyes and beguiling whisper. Either that or the gin. From there Tommy went straight to the king's personal secretary. Arthur Big. A real historical figure, had already arranged for him to receive an OB in exchange for the return of some damaging stolen letters written by George V. Now Tommy offered to provide him and Winston Churchill, who holds me in very high regard, the names of every Communist Party member in Britain, all with the identity of the agent the Soviets had planted high up in the Birmingham branch. In fact Tommy would now do the same thing, rise through the ranks of the wider socialist movement, as he put it, effectively as a government spy. Well that's what he told them anyway. Big obviously believed him. He was as smitten as poor Jesse. You are quite a creature Mr. Shelby, he told him. Appropriately. Of course, the last of the many songs in season 4 was a version of A Hard Rain's A Gonna Fall, which it undoubtedly will in the next series. This was playing as we discovered what Tommy had wanted in return, ironically, from both Arthur Big and Jesse Eden, help becoming a Labour MP. 
If Tommy's selling gin to Al Capone and dazzling Parliament as Small Heath's version of Jeremy Corbyn, the next series won't be dull. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment your opinion, share this video and subscribe to my channel. New videos are uploaded every day.